wait to get to church today and not because of who the speaker was, because that is not. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get to church to be in church. And, and we, we had church this morning and, and uh, then we went to the baseball field. My, my son's in college playing in baseball and he had a, a college scrimmage today and we were watching. And, and although I enjoy watching him on that baseball field like crazy, I kept thinking, is it time to go to church? Yeah, is it time to go to church? I can't wait to go to church. I can't wait to be in the house of the Lord. I can't wait for God to speak. I can't wait uh, for God to move. Yeah. And, and it reminds me so much of, of the Bible times when people would just gather together, be real. They would get together in one mind, one accord, and they would rejuvenate themselves, not so they could just feel good, but so they could go back out and battle. Amen. And I think that our churches are completely losing the fact that we are in a massive battle and that we are in war. And we don't come to fight. We, we come to sit. We come to be entertained. We come to uh, make ourselves feel good, but we don't come to gird ourselves up to go battle. And when we step outside of those doors, that's our battlefield. Yeah. This is where we run to as our safe haven to come get rejuvenated, to yeah. run in because we've taken a wound. We've taken some artillery. We've been hit. We've been hurt. And we come in here. We get healed up. We get sewed up. We get yeah. stitched up. Yeah. Yeah. Not so that we can just sit down and watch others participate so we can go back out and fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the church is completely and utterly losing the fact that we're soldiers of the cross. Yeah, amen. Yeah, buddy. Man, if we could just get that in our mindset. That is not what I'm preaching on tonight. But I will tell you, that God has just been stirring in my soul that we have got to be ready to fight. Amen. Right. It's amen. coming. Yeah. It is coming. Let's open up with prayer tonight. God in heaven, Lord, I just thank you for this evening. God, I thank you for this opportunity to stand, uh, Lord, in your house. And Lord, speak your word. Lord, you promised that your word would not return void. So God, it doesn't matter the messenger. It matters who sent it. God, let the message that you've prepared today, Lord, let the word that you have today be spoke from my lips, God, to your people. Lord, sanctify my lips, God, purify my mouth, God, that I might speak uh, humbly and boldly what the word from your throne is, God. Lord, let those that have gathered tonight, Lord, let them be uh, challenged. Lord, let them be strengthened, God, that we can take this word outside of these walls, God, and proclaim uh, the name of Jesus, the name that's above all names, God. Yeah that we might be able to live a life that is worthy of, of honor to you of what you have done. For God, you took our place on that cross, a, a place of reservation where I should be staying. God, you went. And God, I thank you for that tonight. Lord, be with us as we open up your word, God. Lord, be with us in this service. God, show up and show off because Lord, this is your house. This is your time, God. Have your way. And it's in your holy name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, open your Bibles real quick to 1 Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15, I want to look at one passage that gives the spur to what God gave me for tonight. First Samuel chapter 15, and we're going to see what God tells us. One verse that's going to take us into uh, what God gave me uh, for the church tonight. Verse 22, and it says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, here it is. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Yeah. Samuel said, you know what? I love the fact that you've got all these sacrifices going on. You know, you do all these rituals. You do all these church things. You've you got a lot of things going on. But I'll tell you what's even better. Let me, I'll see your sacrifices and I'll raise you obedience. Yeah. That's yeah. a big difference. Yeah. I mean, I've played church for a long time. Yeah. I've been around church for a long time and I've done a lot of good Christian things and, and I've done a lot of, of good things as a person. But, man, I have messed up royally when it's come to obedience. Samuel said, I'll tell you, the, the top it all off. Obedience is better than your sacrifice. Amen. And that's what took me tonight. God spoke it very clear. Obedience is power. I don't know if you want power in your life tonight, but I'll tell you, it's going to come from the obedience that you give God. Amen. God's power is ready. It is there. It is at your fingertips. But what is the key that unlocks the door? It's your obedience to it. And what keeps us from obeying so often? Our pride and our fear. Things that God never gave us. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. He also didn't fill your life with pride. That's things that you packed in there. That is things that Satan has packed in there. And I want to turn to 2 Kings. Go to 2 Kings, and we're going to look tonight about how you can unleash God's power through just simple obedience. And it doesn't even make sense. 
You know, when, when God tells you to do things so often, it is just absolutely ludicrous in what he gives you. It, it makes no time. sense. God, this makes no sense whatsoever. Why in the world would you want me to go and do that? First off, we try to disqualify ourselves. Then we try to disqualify the calling. And then we wonder, do we really hear him right? Yeah. And it yeah. took me to this passage of scripture. And we know this passage. Go to 2 Kings chapter 5. We're going to look at Naaman tonight. There's some things in there that we're going to pull out that I want you to digest. Some things that we really need to look at. 2 Kings chapter 5. And it says through verse 10, 1 through 10, it says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, he was a great man with his master as, uh, and was honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Yeah. Naaman had an issue. Now, as mighty and great as Naaman was, as powerful and victorious as he was, Naaman all of a sudden had an issue. Now, I don't know about you. I've all of a sudden had issues before. Yeah. I mean, you're going along in your life and you think things are great. And you think things are, are where they should be. And next thing you know, bang, like that, there pops up an issue. And at that time, it doesn't matter if you were a mighty man or a mighty woman of valor. All you got to worry, I got an issue. Yeah, that's right. Naaman said, I got an issue. Yeah. It says, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive. Out of the land of Israel, a little maid. Now, this is a whole different message. I'm going to give you just one little, uh, underneath these tabs, here's number one. Don't ever push a kid away because of their age. Yeah. Naaman's whole story was successful because of a child. That's right. It says that they brought this captive, and there was this little girl, this little maid, and she said, ah, oh, I remember back in my homeland, at my Sunday school class, I heard about a God. I, I love when I heard your daughter talking about what she learned in Sunday school class. A little maid speaking truth. Yeah. Yeah. Verse three, it says, and when she said unto her mistress, uh, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover his leprosy. Isn't it funny how kids just automatically think God's going to heal you? Oh, yeah. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Not a problem. <laughs> Oh, it's no problem. My God can do that. Yeah, that's right. Yep. You know why? Because he can. Yes. Exactly. If we just had the faith of a child, yeah, you know, right. the disciples are pushing these chi ch children away. And he said, if you just had faith like one of these little children, yeah. man, you could conquer the world. Yeah, that's right. I won't go there. I'll keep preaching. Here we go. And one went in and told his Lord and said, thus and thus. We, hey, hey, I said this and said this. And, and the maid told us. That is of the land of Israel. Verse five. And the king of Syria said, go to go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel and he will depart and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. Stop right there. God ain't interested in your money. No, right. Not at all. Yeah. Buddy. God's not interested in your clothing. God's not interested in what you bring to think that you're going to buy the magic potion that comes in, you know, with the power of the Lord. He's not interested about what you brought in. He wants to know, did you bring a heart of obedience? Yeah, that's right. Look what he packed. I'm going to write a letter to the king. I'm going to send this king a letter and we're going to buy him out. Yeah. We're going to buy our way. Let me tell you something. You need to buy your way to nothing. No. Right. It is a gift of God. Yeah, right on, buddy. Right on. Jesus paid all the price. Yeah, that's right. Man, they brought this gold, this silver. And look at verse six. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. And he said, now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have there with, uh, I'm sending Naaman, sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And by the way, here's the boot to go along with it. A little something for you on the side. Here's all this money. Here's all this clothes. And I want you to treat my boy Naaman just right. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, he rent his clothes and he said, am I God yeah. to kill and to make alive that this man does send unto me uh, to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you and seek how he seeks a quarrel against me. Now, I started, I've read this a hundred times over. This afternoon, it hit me, it hit me hard. Who did they send this letter to? I'm like, you. this thing just popped everywhere out of your pocket. By title, should he not have known God? Why do we worship titles? Yeah. We put titles on a pedestal. That's a fact, buddy. This letter was sent to the king of Israel. And wouldn't you think that the king of Israel, wouldn't he be the, be the most godliest man in the land? 
Wouldn't you think by title that he should be the most representation of God? He is the king of God's chosen people. Surely he knows God. Let me tell you something. Just because someone has a title that's doesn't a, mean they know God. That's, that's a fact, right. buddy. Right just because they got a title beside their name and some alphabet soup out behind their name does not mean that they know who God is. Just because you put yourself in a position of what we call power doesn't mean you've got power. This king absolutely freaked out when he seen this letter. Am I God? Can, can I make someone dead or someone alive? Can I yeah. heal? My goodness, they're going to bring a problem into our land. This king started freaking out. Now, I've been around pastors before that when you bring a sick to the altar, they ain't got a clue. Yeah. Demon possession. Oh, that stuff just in the, you know, that's fairy tales. Those things stop. That, that's just a sickness. Give them some medicine. The title does not mean power. Yeah, Obedience means power. Amen. Obedience Amen. is greater than sacrifice. That's right. I, I have been in so many churches, and one of the first things I look for when I go into a church is I look, where's the oil? Where's the anointing oil? Because I want to be in a church that believes in the full Amen. work of the Holy Spirit Amen. of God. Amen. I don't want to leave out one bit of it. Yep. There's times where a little dab will do you and a dose will do you great. Yeah. yeah. And this king started freaking out. Look at verse 8. I love this title, though. And it was so in Elisha. Now, here's a title you can count on. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a title. If you want to take a title to the bank, take this title. Yeah. Man of God. Yeah. You know what our world needs? Yeah. A lot less kings, yeah. a lot less preachers, yeah. a lot less teachers, a lot less priests or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. We need a whole lot more men and women of God. Our world is lost and dying because the man and the women of God have tucked their tails. Yeah. They are no longer in the forefront because they don't have the right pedigree, not the right paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. People ask, well, well Brandon, where would you go to Bible college? Bible college of hard knocks. Yeah. Yeah. Learned it the hard way by a lot of failure, a lot of study, a lot of burned up time on my knees, a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures. That's right, and right. I learned along the way what this Bible says. Did I always obey it? Nope. But I'll tell you right now, it's not that I got knocked down. It's how many times can I get back up? That's right. Right. Yeah. Buddy. It's right on. Right on. Yep. Men and women of God is what's going to bring this country back to its position of where it should yeah. be. That's right. Man of God. That's the title we need to look at. It says that when it was so, Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. That he sent to the king and said, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. <coughs> yeah. Let him come to me. Yeah. Man, the last thing some of us need to do is go to a pastor. Yeah. We need to go to men and women of God. Yeah. 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 Find you a prayer warrior. Yeah. yeah. Find you a closet prayer warrior. Find you a, a man or a woman that spends their morning hours praising God and praying <laughs> to God in the quiet and the stillness. Find you a man or woman of God that's not afraid of a fight. Right. You know, our yeah. world right now, we are so afraid of a fight. As Pastor Adam was preaching last Sunday, I almost jumped up and started singing. I should have done it, but I will do it the next time we come because I want him to hear it. The song, Step Into the Water. It is time that we, the Christians, stand up for what is right. It's time that we squared our shoulders back. We raised our swords to fight for the Bible is our weapon and the spirit is our shield. And the church needs more of our members to be workers in the field. Amen. That's where we got to be. Amen, buddy. Right on. And I tell you, I see these churches, they're filled with a lot of good sacrifices. There's some good money flow in there. There's some good three-piece suits in there. There are some good people in there. But there's not a lot of men and women of God in there. Yeah. Elisha said, you bring that problem to me. Let me show you what can happen when a man of God rolls his sleeves up and gets yeah. to work. Yeah. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Now, isn't it just like us? Yeah. We want a parade, man. We want people to see us. Yeah. It's that pride. Yeah. We, we, we want people to, to notice that we're here. You know, he showed up with all of his array, his great array, because I'm going to do Elisha a favor, and I'm going to let Elisha... Take a stab at healing me. And he should be grateful because I'm this mighty man in his presence. Elisha. I love Elisha. He said, hey, servant boy, come here. Yeah. Go out and tell this guy. Yeah. Yep. I want him to go down and I want him to dunk in the river seven times. The muddy, nastiest river in all the land. Look, listen. He says, Elisha sent his servant out and said, go wash in the Jordan River. Elisha didn't even go out and meet him. Right. 
I love that part. It ain't about you. It's all about God. It's all about his obedience. It's all about your faith. Could you imagine the look on Naaman's face? We have to imagine. We're going to see the next few verses. Naaman was absolutely appalled. He was furious. Who does Elisha think he is? And then he said the word that is jailing every one of them. There's a punchline coming here. Get ready for it. He said, I thought. Yeah. Where are your thoughts keeping you captive tonight? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Elisha said, well, I, or not Elisha, Naaman said, well, I thought that the man of God would come out and do this. I thought that he would do this and do that. Where are your thoughts keeping you captive tonight? Well, I thought by now I'd be here in my life. I thought by now I'd be a dad. And God said, just wait a minute. I got one coming. Yeah. Maybe two, maybe three. I don't know. I don't want to speak that over, but I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah. it's coming. Oh, yeah, that's right. All girls, yeah. triplet girls, yeah. just gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all I could ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I want you to think about it. Your mind is a jail cell. Yes, it is. You're right. That's a fact, buddy. It's a prison. Yep. yep. Fact. What are your thoughts doing to you tonight? That's right. I, well, I thought God would have healed me by now. Well, I thought God would have shown favor by yeah, now. That's right. I thought God didn't love me anymore. Yeah. I thought I've done too much. Yeah. I yeah. thought and I thought and I thought. I thought I've gone too far. I thought I was too far under. I thought that I wasn't good enough. I thought that I didn't have the right connections. Well, I thought that I wasn't worth it. I thought and I thought and I thought and Satan sits back there and he whispers in your ear these little convicting thoughts and it's like, boy, that sounds right. Yeah. That sounds yeah. right. right. And it just takes you deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper. Yeah. And Naaman sat there and he said, well, I thought he was going to miss everything that God had for him because of something yeah. he thought. Folks, when you sit in church, I'm telling you, God's got something for you. Right? God's got something for you. But it's, you get out of your mind. Yeah. You got to get out of your mind. You got to get out of that jail cell and let God work yeah. and get out past the thought. Well, I thought empty your minds tonight. Yeah. Quit thinking. Be yeah. still yeah. Yeah. and know that I am God. Yep. That's right, buddy. Right on. You, it's a powerful place right here. Naaman was raw. He went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me. And stand and call upon the name of the Lord of his God and strike his hand over. Man, he wanted a TV show. Yeah. What you, I mean, Naaman wanted the dancing bears. I mean, he wanted everything. Yeah. Well, I thought for sure that he yeah. would come out because he knew it was me and, and come out with his little jig and, and, and wave his hand over my leopard hand and, and, and do this great work. And be, How many times have you missed God because you thought oh, you deserved something right. better? Absolutely. Yeah. That pride, that pride, mm -hmm. the very first sin ever in the entire existence of all anything, pride. Yeah. yeah. Satan said, am I not like the most high? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> am I not? I thought I was just as good as he was. Yeah. That pride. Let me tell you something. Pride is going to keep people from a lot of places. Yeah, it's going to keep. It might, it might not keep you out of heaven. Maybe you sacrificed. Maybe you came down to the altar and you kneeled and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and you got your salvation solid. But let me ask you this: Have the blessings been released in your life? Maybe you're sitting there and you say, "Well, I'm saved, but you know my life is in shambles." Is it because you thought something? Let those thoughts go. Let God be God. Let Him do a work in you. Don't expect this big song and dance. Just come to Him humbly. Yeah. And pour out. Keep reading. And then he says, Are not the Abana and the, the far par river of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away and went his way in rage. How many people would leave church on Sundays, mad? Huh, I thought that pastor would at least recognize that I came today and mention from the pulpit that I was here. <laughs> I thought for sure that he would know. I, I thought for sure that he would mention that I made the biggest donation to the new building going on the side of the church. I thought that would happen. Hey, Naaman, pack up your money, pack up your raiments yeah. and your pride and go back to your homeland yeah. or humbly obey. Yeah, that's right. Choice is yours tonight, folks.
You can humbly obey and receive everything that God has for you, or you can pridefully walk away in anger. That's your choice. Amen. God says, I will, I will. It's his will that he gives unto all of us abundantly. Yeah, that he opens right. up the windows Amen. of heavens and pour out from him a blessing yeah. that fills your cup. Run it over, God. That's right. Keep reading. This is why friends are so important. Let me tell you something. Andrew and I came into this church hurting. We came into this church wounded. We came into this church, and let me tell you, not, uh, some wounds, wounds are from others, and some are self-inflicted, but at the same day, it's still a wound. Yeah, yep. that's right, buddy. We came in wounded, hurt. I praise God for friends. That's I right. praise God for godly men and women yeah. that will speak truth into your ear. Absolutely. And sometimes right. it's the yep. things that you don't necessarily want to hear, but it's everything that you need to hear. Yeah, that's right. right. I don't want... Naaman had a little earpiece. The servants came near and spoke unto him and said, hey, my father, if the prophet had bid you to go do some great thing, would you have done it? <laughs> yeah. How much rather then when he says to thee, wash and be clean? It's, it's that simple. Why do we want to make this thing difficult? Why do we want to walk away making this thing something it shouldn't be? Why do we want to make it difficult? God is pretty simple. Obey and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Kneel and be blessed. Amen. Surrender and Amen. be blessed. Amen. He said, hey, I, I praise God for the people that have been surrounding us in times. And, and you know, there's times with, why did this person walk away? Why did that person walk away? And God's like, because that's not who we needed. You didn't need them. Here's what you did need. Well, if I'd have asked you to do something great and mighty, would you have done it? Well, yeah, Lord, I would have done it. Well, how much better than just to do something simple? Yeah. Just go repent. Yeah. Just go humbly back yeah. and watch me cure and heal what has been wounded. Amen. Man, I love it. It says, then they went down and dipped himself. Now, hold on. We're going to stop. We're going to. There's something to this. There's a lot of us that I, I wanted to paint this picture first. There's a lot of us. That have gotten what Naaman got. You understood it. You heard God's voice. But in the midst of your obedience, it started to not make sense. Yep. Now, could you imagine Naaman? He pulls up to the Jordan River and he looks at his servant. And he goes, this disgusting river. This is what I got to be. He, yeah, that's what he said. I'm checking the text message. That's what he said. Jordan River he says it right there. He takes a step out there and he's just grumbling. Yeah, you know, right. I'm going to church this morning, but I'm not real happy about it. Yeah. And you argue all the way yeah. to church. Yeah. And right when you pull up, every good Christian husband and wife. Now you put a smile on that face because we'll finish this in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we were coming here and Andrea looked at me and she goes, I don't even want to worship with you tonight. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, guess what? Yeah. You are. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I deserved it. I deserved it. I was the one provoking it. Oh, yeah. But we do. We get in the middle yep. of these obedient sacrifices. And we get caught up in the sacrifice and we lose sight of yep. the obedience. It's never going to be the sacrifice that gets you blessed, but it's always going to be the obedience. That's a fact. Every time. Always. Yep. Because right. God's word cannot return void. And yep. when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Yep. Amen. And all of a sudden, Naaman gets in that river and he dunks once. And I, can, I guarantee you, he popped out of that river and goes, still a leper. Yeah. Yeah. Still a leper. Yeah. Yep. Dunk twice. Yeah. Dunk three times. Dumped four times. Yeah. I guarantee that he looked over at the bank and said, please do not be filming this. This looks stupid. Don't put it on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the things that God calls you to do is absolutely ludicrous. Absolutely. Yes. It didn't matter if he dunked seven times or five times. The water was the same, but it had everything to do with the obedience of what God told yeah, you. Yeah, that's right, buddy. It's, right the yep. Yep. it's the follow through. It's the follow through. It's to tumble in the lock. I love that. The other night we were here and, and, and Brother Tim got up and he said, you, that was a key. And that key went in. And as the key begins to turn, certain tumbles have got to fall in place. One tumble, two tumble, yeah, three tumble, right, four tumble, 
five tumble, six tumbles, and if Naaman would have stopped yeah. at six, yeah. yep. he'd have walked out of here like we do so often. Absolutely. Unblessed right and yep. soaking wet, discouraged yep. and filled with anger. Amen, buddy. Yep. With a mind full of I thoughts. Yep. Man, if you just dunk one more time. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Why do I need to dunk one more time? Because God said to do it. Right, right on. Yes. Could you imagine the joy along the banks of the river? Because Naaman wasn't alone. Naaman had a whole entourage. Remember, he wanted everyone to see him. So, I mean, he brought the Calvary. Yeah. There was a lot of people along the banks of that river. And they were going, just do it, Naaman. <laughs> Finally, he went down. I mean, yeah. you idiot, just one more time, <laughs> waste of daylight. Finally, he goes under there and he comes back up and he's cured. Yeah. Completely clean. Yeah. What's it going to take? What's it going to take for you to go all in? Amen. I, I don't. I don't. I don't mean here. The song says, "Wade out a little further." Yeah, that's right. Step into the water. Wade out a little bit deeper. Wet your feet in the water of His love. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Step into the water. Wade out a little bit deeper. Yes. Come join angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. Yes. Imagine if you just stepped all the way in. Yeah. And just let God go. I mean, and just feel it. You can feel it. Just let God have as a control. It's that obedience factor. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to let me have my way? Or are you going to stay on the shore side of Naaman with that white nasty arm of yours? Or are you going to get in here all in? Yeah. There's a big difference about being in the pool and being under. Yeah. Big difference. Man, that obedience, when Naaman felt that, absolutely erupted on that bank side. <laughs> but then I began to think, okay, Lord, I know what's going to go through some of your minds. And I don't know you guys personally. And I pray over the years that we're together and our friendships are together, we start to know each other more on a personal basis. I can promise you that this is from the Lord. Some of you, because this was me, was afraid to go all in because of what you might lose. Right. Yep. You might not go all the way in. Lord, because if I go all the way in, there's a lot of things I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. And God, me and you both know I ain't got a lot. But what I do have, I, I, I got these friends, God. I, I got these things. I got this job. I got, and if I go all in, I, I might lose this job. I might lose this friend. I, God, I ain't got nothing left. If I go all in and obey you to the fullest, God, I'm afraid what's over there. Now, let's be honest. Don't look at me like I'm a lunatic. Because that, I mean, it's easy to do. Trust me. You felt it. You've been there. God, I, I don't mind being in the water, God, but don't ask me to go above my waist. Yeah. <laughs> God, I don't mind being at my waist, but don't ask me to go to the breast. God, don't ask me to go to my chin. And Lord, as long as we're being honest, there ain't no way I'm going over my head. I was in college playing baseball. And we had to do our, our workouts. In the wintertime, we'd go down to the pool and do our workouts. We had this young guy. I mean, he was just, I mean, just a muscle-bound, strong athlete. And we, at first day, we were freshmen. He was a freshman with me. And the coach says, hey, we're going <clears> to <throat> meet at the pool 5 a.m. get our workout in. So I ain't getting that pool. Yeah. What are you talking about? I can't swim. That's all, all of us made fun of him, you know, like 20-year-old guys yeah. do. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, here he comes walking out of the shower room by himself with a floaty, yep. floaties up his arm, on his leg, shaking. Why does it go? He's walking to the poolside. That's us on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Yeah. We are so afraid to go all in because we don't fully trust. We don't fully trust that if we get all the way in the water, we're going to be okay. And it took me this morning, I was sitting in the message while I was listening, and God said, open your Bible to Exodus. And I flipped to Exodus. Turn with me here, real quick. I turned over to Exodus. 
<clears throat> Exodus chapter 12, look at verses 35 and 36. The Lord said, look at this. When the children of Israel had followed God's word to the fullest. Now, mind you, mind you, the children of Israel were in total captivity by Egypt, by the Egyptians. Total captivity had been that way for 400 years. Life was not good. Amen? Yeah, right. That's right. They were, they were in captivity. Thoughts, mind, a lot of us in captivity today, not receiving the full blessings. Children of Israel, look what it says, verse 35. The children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels, silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Yeah. That was a promise of God. Yeah. Yep, yep. You know where that promise came from? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. That promise came from Genesis chapter 15. Turn to it. Let me tell you, when God calls you into the river, it's because he's got something waiting Absolutely. for you. He he's got yeah. something there Amen. for you. Amen. Genesis chapter 15, verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And after they will come out with great substance. Yep. Well, he, said, Amen. Yep. he told Abraham, that nation's going to go into captivity. Don't you worry. When they come out, they're going to bring a whole bunch of stuff with them. Yep, yep, that's right. God's never going to call you out of your prison. He's never going to call you out of your captivity unless he's got a whole yep. plan of Amen. blessings waiting for Amen, you. Amen, buddy. Right on. It's just your obedience. Church, it's just your obedience. Where are you on that obedience factor? There are people, I will promise, there are people sitting tonight that need it. They need it. But you're sitting there thinking, sounds stupid. Maybe not tonight. You know, I tell you what, we'll wait till Sunday morning when there's more people. Well, we'll wait till, till the next time when, when maybe there's not as many people. Yeah. You know, we'll wait until someone sees me and, and, and I want so-and-so to be here or I'm afraid to swim. And you come to church with your life preservers on. Because you are afraid to get all in. Yeah. Church, let me tell you something. If there's ever a time where we need to be all in, it's Amen. now. Amen. It is I now. I don't, want I don't know what we're waiting for. I don't, I don't know want. what it is that yeah. could be any more prevalent in our life right now. God needs a group of people yeah. that are all Amen, in buddy. all yep. the time. Yeah. It may not make sense. It might be fearful. It might make uh, the, the, the hair on the back of your head stand up. I don't care what it is. If God's calling you to do it, God's going to supply it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's right. But then I, I, I've been in this life for so long. It's all I know. Children of Israel said the same thing. Yeah. That's all we know. We're slaves. We, we don't have anything. By the time they left because of their obedience, the world was packing their own bags yeah. and said, hey, here's 50 bucks and here's another 200. Yeah. And Here's my clothes and some silver and just yeah. get out of here. Yeah. Because if you stay, God's going to kill us all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the power of our God. Yeah. Amen. The power of God is only limited to your obedience or disobedience. Church, where are we on our obedience factor? God was very plain tonight, very, very plain with me. He said, Ben, power in obedience. Obedience is power. There are people tonight, I, I, I don't know, but there are people tonight struggling with a decision. You are struggling with a decision of what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Am I going to be alone? Am I going to have people go with me? I might lose it all. All I can tell you is this. If God is calling you into the water, don't tiptoe, dive all in. Amen. Just get it over with. Yep. Don't right. test the temperature. Don't test the depth. Yep. Just dive in yep. and get it over with and let him raise you up new. Amen, buddy. Right That's on. the only way to do it. It's like those kids, you take them to the pool. It's like they don't even test the water. They just go run and just cannonball. Just boosh. Man, if you would do that, could you imagine what God would give you? He's looking for some cannonballers tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Okay. <laughs> the church is in a sad state. Right. 
we're in a sad state because we would rather sit on the side of the pool and just put our toes in. Amen. Right. Buddy. And then tell people we went swimming. That's right on. Right on, buddy. Right on. Are you swimming? Listen, I am an absolute prankster. If you come with me and all you're going to do is put your toes in, we're going in the river. <laughs> Some way, somehow. It might probably be both of us, but we're going in. Can we be that way in church? Yeah. If your brother or sister is struggling, why don't you go get him and throw him in the water? That's right. Go with them. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. You ever see people sitting at a party and they they won't get in the pool and you'd know that if they would just get in the pool, they'd have a good time. But they got over there, got this big old sourpuss, you know, look on their face. And you just finally go over there and you grab a hold of them and you just chuck. Everybody loves that. Yeah. <laughs> and they can say the same one. They love it, too. Yeah. <laughs> but why don't we as a church walk back and say, brother, sister, I know you're struggling. Let's go. Yeah. Let's get in the water. And if you're afraid to swim, I'll hold your hand. I'm going to go with you because I know what's in there Amen. is everything that you need. Amen. Right. 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 around God right. and right. just right. dive all in yeah. Yeah. Amen. and let God do his work. Amen. I, I will tell you that there are people tonight with decisions that they are rattling around in their brain. I don't know what they are, but God does. The answer is this. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want power in your life, you got to be willing to be obedient. Even when it makes no sense, even when it sounds like it's you are worth more or you're not worth this. Quit listening to the, the mind trap that Satan tries to play. Get out of your head. Quit thinking Amen. those thoughts. Well, I thought this and I thought that. Let me tell you, you are never too far gone. Amen. Ever. Amen. Deepest parts of this earth has already been encompassed by a man. Who was it? Jonah. It says from the deepest parts of the earth, I cried out and God still heard. I don't care what you're tangled in. I don't care how deep you Amen. think you are in it. You can be set free yeah, by the blood right. of Jesus. Yeah. It holds no barriers. Yeah. It has no respect for a person. Yeah, right. It doesn't Amen. matter. He will set you free. No Amen. condemnation. And there is absolutely nothing that Satan can do about it. He's powerless. Amen, buddy. Right on. Let God show up and show off. Yeah, man. Amen. You know, I, I think all the time about the battles that, that has already been fought. And I can't wait for Michael. To finally have his last bout with Satan. Yeah. I can't wait. I want to sit ringside because Michael has whipped him a few times, and the, the next fight is coming when it says that Michael tosses him out of heaven for the last time. I can't wait for God to say, you know what, Michael? I've had enough. Get him out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And and Michael and the yeah. angels yeah. get after him, yeah. and that battle takes place. But until then, I'm going to keep taking it to the blood. I'm yeah. going to keep taking it to God yeah. and let him yeah. do my battles and let him do my fighting and tell that old accuser that goes before God, yeah. I'm covered. Yeah. yeah, that's right, buddy. Yep. Get in the water. Yeah. The obedience yeah. is in, has the power. Your power is found yeah. in your obedience. Amen, buddy. I might have a song here if you, if you want to get a song ready. I got to preach, like I told you guys a couple Sundays ago. No, I didn't. I didn't tell you. I was able to preach after I left here, and I, I went to a church that wasn't used to have an altar call. The preacher said, we, we haven't done altar calls in years. Yeah. They have a church with an altar call. So they thought it was quite odd when we opened up the altars. I love and praise God that this house knows how to pray. This house is not afraid to get in victory formation. Yeah. This house is not afraid to go win a battle by being on the knees for their brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't know what a struggle is. I'm telling you, God laid it on my heart so strong today, so I know it's real. There is a, a, a struggle with decisions. Lord, is it a job? Is it a relationship? Is it a, you know, whatever it might be? Is it a decision for Christ? Is it a surrendering of, of an addiction? Is it whatever it might be? I will tell you this. God's never going to leave you stranded. And all the victory is found in all the obedience. Period. Amen, buddy. Yeah. Let's take it to God in prayer. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, God, I do pray. Lord, I pray for those souls tonight that has heard this word. God, I pray that you convict them, Lord. Lord, that you lay upon them that convicting power, God. Lord, that they would make that decision to go all in. God, I, I don't want to be a tiptoe Christian. God, I don't want to be a Christian up to my knees. God, I want to surrender it fully. God, I want to be over my head in your love. God, I pray for the battles that are taking place. Lord, this is when Satan likes to whisper. 
Lord, I pray that you would rise up a standard around this house. Lord, that you would keep at bay anything that would keep someone from making a decision. Lord, increase their faith. Lord, give them the, the, the decision to make. Lord, that they would say, hey, today is the day. It is time that I go down. I'm not going to stop at six. I'm going to seven. I'm not going to be held back at five. I'm going to six. I'm going to seven. And I'm going to see a victory. That victory is in obedience. God, I pray that in your holy name. God, be with us as we go through this time. That's in your name we pray. Amen. You want to come tonight and pray? Let's pray. If there's people that need prayed over, there are men and women in this house that will gladly pray over you. It's time that we win battles.